Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Triangulation is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Triangulation, episode 207, recorded on Monday, July 6th, 2015. Dave Pensato and Herb Trowick. This episode of Triangulation is brought to you by NatureBox. NatureBox ships tasty and guilt-free snacks right to your door. With over 100 flavors to choose from, like mini Belgian waffles, you'll never get bored of snacking again. Try NatureBox at naturebox.com slash twit. That's naturebox.com slash twit. And by Wealthfront. Wealthfront is a low-cost, automated investment service that is the most sophisticated way for you to invest your money. Whether you've got millions or you're just starting out, visit wealthfront.com slash triangulation to sign up and get your free personalized investment portfolio. That's wealthfront.com slash triangulation. And by Braintree. If you're working on a mobile app and searching for a simple payment solution, check out Braintree. With one simple integration, you can offer your customers every way to pay, period. To learn more, and for your first $50,000 in transactions fee-free, go to braintreepayments.com slash triangulation. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Triangulation. This is the show where we get together with some of the smartest people on the internet, in the world of technology, uh, just people doing awesome things all around the world, uh, and talk to them about kind of those things, what makes them so great, and th their efforts, and all that kind of stuff. And uh, obviously, first of all, I'm not Leo, I'm Jason. Leo's off vacationing somewhere, but I'm thrilled to be stepping in for this week's triangulation, primarily because yeah. when I heard about the, the, the opportunity to interview someone, almost immediately I knew exactly who I wanted to interview, and I'm super excited about today's show. Um, please welcome to the show. We have uh, two, two people, actually. They're, they're a dynamic duo. We have Dave Pensato, Grammy-winning uh, mix engineer. He's, he's worked with artists that you've heard of, Michael Jackson, Beyonce, Elton John, Mariah Carey, just to name a few. The list goes on and on. Uh, and uh, his manager, and veteran manager, Herb Trowick, uh, they both do a show called Pensado's Place that I'm a huge fan of. It's been on, uh, on the internet, you know, in podcast form for the past five years, and they both host and produce that show. You guys, it's an honor to get the chance to talk to you. Thank you so much for joining us on Triangulation. Oh man, the pleasure's ours, Jason. Thanks for having us on. Yeah, we're big, we're big fans, Jason. Right on. Um, yeah, you know, we're in we're in an interesting time when it comes to digital media online because at at one point media was you know and and television and movies it it really placed a giant wall between uh, the fans of the content and the people that run run the content, the people in front of the camera. And now I, f I feel like that's kind of changed. Would you would you agree? We're we're in kind of an, an era of of uh, of entertainment where you know our heroes are directly accessible uh, because because of the internet. Couldn't have said it better. Uh, sometimes they're a little too accessible, but that's another story for another time. Um, you know what? Um, um, I, I think we're in a, in, a, in, a, in a new golden age of information, not just uh, audio, but everything. I, I mean, it's rare that I have a question and I, uh, that I can't answer, and I have a lot of questions. And, um, I agree with everything you're saying. It's, it's, um, it's great to be so close to the audience, and it's great to have the audience. Uh, have, have our heroes close to us when we become an audience. Well, and I think we've created a a digital media class for all intents and purposes. There, you you almost don't exist in the world, and sometimes to your detriment, unless you communicate somehow through digital media, be it social or whatever the case may be. And all, and a, a large percentage of folks are also publishers. So you know, just posting that cat video. Or, or how, however deep you want to go with it. So there's a whole new set of skills. There's a whole new set of, you know, opportunities, a whole new set of challenges. And uh, it's a fascinating place to live, and, it, and it's ever-evolving month after month. Hey, Jason, uh, a footnote. Um, Herb and I have, have noticed that the people that view our show tend to not make a distinction between broadcast TV, traditional TV, and... and uh, and, and where we are on the internet, 
And one of the things that we've tried to do is to actually maintain uh, a human element to everything we do. And I think that, um, I think hopefully that transcends and comes across the little iPhone screen that, that, that we actually are real people talking to real people. Yeah, and I think, you know, a big part of that um, is just kind of the, the passion behind the effort, you know, like on, on the internet, creating content for the internet in, in this day uh, really kind of revolves around kind of niches that, we, that you know, you, you attend to the audio and music production niche really well, and you fill, you fill a hole that was absolutely there before. I know when I was going to, you know, university for, for audio production years ago, um, this is the kind of content that I would have lived and, and, and died with. I, I, you know, I would, I would consume it as if it, as if it were water. Um, and there are a lot of people in that, in that bucket, but there aren't nearly as many people in that bucket as there are the viewership of a, of a network like NBC. Uh, same goes for Twit, you know, but we, we attend to the technology niche. Uh, but it's just, it's amazing that we can do that. And that out of doing that, even though it's a smaller bucket, it's a smaller, dedicated, but much more dedicated and devoted uh, group of people that help kind of rise you up and, and enable you to do this for a living. It's amazing. And, and more and more, I think that these niches are starting to blur. Um, what, what were segregated boxes four or five years ago now, by the nature of everybody in digital media, they, there's there's crossover. So, um, you know, a lot of people in the... We have never built our show based on the fact that it was just musical production. I was adamantly against that. We're an audio show. And if you do anything with audio, there's some contextual part of our show that you can get something from. So we have followers from ADR and gaming and Foley and film and television. Obviously, our expertise is in music, so we wanted to stay kind of where we were, but we broaden out all the time and talk about different kinds of things. And, you know, and then, you know, we have a series of live events and other things that we do. We travel around and speak and put on what, you know, our version of things. And one of the things we tell people all the time in our live events is there's no place in the world that there isn't audio. There's no place that's silent. Mm -hmm. And that means there's a lot of things in audio that go way past just record engineering. There's forensics, there's medical, there's sports, there's all kinds of stuff that are audio applicable. And we want to find those stories and talk about those experts who do that. And, and, and that makes something much less niche when you approach it that way. Also, too, sometimes we forget that, that what's a niche on the Internet, because the inter Internet is available to billions of people, something that's a niche on the Internet is actually bigger than, than a, a broad-based uh, concept on traditional uh, broadcast uh, mm -hmm. methods, you know? Mm -hmm. we've, actually, we've actually had times where we were drawing bigger numbers than some of the broadcast networks. We did it. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of uh, a little bit of back and forth debate there. Um, yeah, I know. I think, and and your your show has kind of shown this is that, and you and you point out in the book, which by the way, the Pensados Papers right here uh, is a book that you can get. It kind of details uh, Dave and Herb's kind of uh, adventure from just being professionals in the industry into still being professionals into the industry, but also somehow tacking on this weekly show that they do uh, called Pensado's Place. I don't know how you juggle all that stuff. But you mentioned in the book um, how kind of the broadening of the scope of the show from early on, you know, it was, it was just about, you know, mixing, essentially, being a mix engineer and who are the awesome mix engineers in the space. And then at some point, it kind of grew. You, uh, you, you know, worked with Cat Gray and, you know, he's, he's with Let's Make a Deal and you, you got the chance to kind of see uh, what audio was like on a really kind of fast-paced live television environment. You know, you got to work with Dylan Dresdo, you know, and talk about Super Bowl halftime show uh, with the Black Eyed Peas, just kind of a broadening um do you think that's kind of been essential uh to the to the growing success of your show yeah uh, those are all herb's ideas um <laughs> I'm, I'm just a homer mix engineer i'd be happy if we only did 
shows with mixed engineers. But one of the things I learned from my relationship with Herb is, is exactly what he said when we started this interview, and that audio encompasses so much more than just that one little segment of mixed engineering. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm learning more than anybody about all these other areas, and it's just it's fascinating. It's, um, it, it's, it's really cool. And, and by the way, we have a lot of people that watch the show uh, trying to figure out a direction in life or, or a place to put their, their love for, for music and audio. And I, I think one of the neat things is, among many, is that uh, the show does allow you to see different options in this wonderful world of audio and make the decision career-wise. And so that's a big, a big thing that I'm pretty proud of that what we've been able to do. Absolutely. I would totally agree with that. So um, just to kind of give people a sense of where where this all started. So Dave, you 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 started as a mixing engineer uh, in Atlanta about 30 years or so, would you say? Right around there? Uh, um, if I can go back to, um, uh, I've, I've always, I've always known I was going to do something in music. My mom was, um, taught me guitar and piano and taught me music. And, and uh, I, I fought for a number of years between going into the sciences and music. So um, I've always looked at, at the process is, is, is one of making records. I've always mm -hmm. just wanted to be a part of the record-making process. So um, it just seemed like the industry selected me to be a mixer, but I would have been happy being a guitar player or a... Uh, uh, an engineer, a tracking engineer, but uh, once I found mixing, uh, it just consumed me. It, 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 to me, it's just the most incredible thing because I get to use every experience I've ever had in life from psychology to psychiatry to uh, <laughs> uh, all the records I've listened to, all the clubs I've played, all the people I've met. So, mm -hmm. yeah, mixing is, um, is where my heart's at. Yeah, and I mean, I, I think, you know, in the world of audio, and I think just passion in general, you know this from a very early early stage. You know that, hey, you know, my, my passion lies in working with audio or, or music production or just straight up music, and uh, that, that drives you. One thing I found very interesting about uh, kind of your, your history, Dave, because, you know, when I was a student... You know, all the stu all the audio students that I went to school with, it was always about like, how do you break through? How do you get your foot in the door? How do you make an impression and become a professional in this industry that, you know, not a whole lot of people are fortunate enough to uh, consider themselves a full you know a full time career. Um, and one thing that I found totally fascinating, and I wonder if this is still something that <laughs> people could learn from and do today, is that when you when you moved from Atlanta, where you were doing some, some engineering, to uh, Los Angeles, you knew mm -hmm. that the way that you could kind of break in uh, to the industry was really just to kind of put yourself in the door of some of the best studios, just literally by sneaking in, by making yourself seem <laughs> like you, uh, you had a right to be there. Uh, is that something right. that would really work for people today, or do you think that was kind of a bygone era when, that when you were able to get away well. with that? You know what? I'll expand the question and give you a broader answer. Sure. Uh, I wasn't the only one of this Ben Soft Place duo that snuck into places to further his career. Um, her, who's um, one of the most intelligent people I've ever met and, and whom, who I owe uh, my career to, her was sneaking into lectures at the various well-known institutions of higher learning in L.A. just because he wanted to hear David Geffen or he wanted to hear... Irving is off speak. So I think it's a tried and true method. Um, uh, for me, I never, I, I never thought about not being an engineer, engineer. I never thought about being an engineer. I just always wanted to be part of the record making process. And mm -hmm. um, the, the romantic notion that I'm sneaking into studios, I was just trying to get a quick bath and steal some fruit out of the lounge. That was pretty much my main goal. <laughs> And during that process, I met Herb. Um, Herb says I had a mold at the time. That's up for discussion. I don't think I did. <laughs> but I had my, my little Bon Jovi boots with my jeans tucked in. And, and Herb, uh, I'll, I'll let Herb take from here because I, I think uh, while my version of the story is a little better, Herb is probably more accurate. 
Well, it's it's actually the same version. Um, one one of the things that I think, well, well, first of all, Dave is always so generous with credits, and the reality of it is, is we both have, I, from what we hear from other people, singular skills, but they they have a multiplier effect of a hundred when we're together, and we have been friends for twenty five or thirty years. I was his first manager, and we met both sneaking into a studio. Um, and the fact of the matter is, is that uh, the way Dave was mixing his blood, I wanted to always be an executive in the record business. And frankly, the passion is no different. Um, and a lot of people get a whole lot of, you know, things misinterpreted about who's more passionate, who's more organic. The reality of any business, which only, you know, 1% of the folks get through, mm-hmm. is that you have to care an awful lot about it to put yourself through what it takes. You have to risk a lot. You have to know how to throw elbows. You have to learn a lot and learn on the fly. So Dave and I met each other at exactly the appropriate time. We were exactly at the same place. We had pretty similar aspirations. And so we took a shot together. And through some relationships that I had and through Dave's skill set, we got him in the most unlikely situation where this southern dude from Atlanta um, you know, one of the most white looking men in the world ended up <laughs> doing her brown. Yeah, yes, sort of latte. <laughs> um mocha. Mocha or latte, it really works. Um ended up doing a hip hop remix on Belle de Devoe that was about the best melange of rock and hip hop ever and he, he stayed hot for thirty years from this unlikely beginning and that's kinda how we have managed our friendship and our relationship is just based on trust and and not having any fear and you know we haven't won all the time and but we we've, we've never been disconnected. But this last run has been we're out of adjectives. We're just utterly amazed, utterly blessed and really committed to continuing to grow this thing. Yeah, I think one of the one of the threads there as well is luck. And I think that's that's one of the things that I think people who want to find themselves in this industry have a hard time coming to grips with is like, you know, it it, it kind of seems like a, your opportunity with the Belle Biv DeVoe, Do Me Baby uh, song, you know, early on, that was obviously the door that allowed you to continue doing what you have been doing for 30 years. There's a little, there's a little amount of luck in, in getting that opportunity. Uh, and I think a lot of people have a hard time knowing that, you know, you can have talent, to, uh, you know, as far as the day is long, but sometimes you need that lucky chance to come along to really propel you into hey, the spotlight hey, and put you hey, in the right hey, place. Hey, let me stop you for a minute, because luck is a word that, that certainly is applicable to, to both Herb and I, but, but it, it, just, it has shortcomings in terms of its meaning. Um, mm-hmm. We weren't both sitting in our respective living rooms playing video games and suddenly <laughs> something could happen. Right. Um, you mentioned opportunity. That cliche comes to mind about luck is when preparation meets opportunity. But Herb and I were both out the bat. We were both trying to, um, um, I don't know what we were trying to do. I just wanted to be out in the bat because I love studios. And, and I think, I think, I think it, it's important to just go try to do something. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't know how to describe it. Herb, Herb, you can help me, but um, nothing good happens when you're not out and about. And uh, what does out and about mean? It, it can mean going to parties, going to studios, going to see live bands, um, decisions about moving, decisions about career, the same effort that you make can sometimes produce good results and bad results. So the process becomes knowing when to change that decision and make another decision. Luck, luck is something that you use in retrospect. When you're active and doing things, you don't know that moment that is luck. You right. just take the moment... Right and try to maximize that moment, then you look back and go, wow, wasn't that luck? That's a term that's used a lot afterwards. But there's a whole lot of people with lucky opportunities and just fucked up the opportunity. Yeah. They, they just didn't maximize I, 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 I messed up a few, too. Well, we all have. I, I think that's part of it. So, um, look, Pensava's Place is about the most unlikely thing for, for us to do. 
Um, I wouldn't say that the circumstances that he was born out of were lucky, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. what we did is we took that opportunity and then um, we planned this to within an inch of its life to try to give it the most opportunity to be lucky <laughs> um, that we can, which is how I think you roll. And also I think that's how you roll after you've had some life experiences. So it's much harder when you're younger to sort of have that perspective. And that's where you take Dave's point. Be active, be out, expand your experience. Um, we, we often advise people to not just be the head down society. Right. You put your head in your phone, then lift your head up, get some contacts, get some contacts and some context, develop some relationships, know how to interact with people. In this game, particularly visual media arts, and we, we think we sit at the intersection of what we call edutainment, um, it's not just going to be what you know technically. It's going to be how you interact with people, how you engage with people. So you kind of make your life, and then you do something with it when it comes up. Yeah. No, that makes perfect sense. Hey, Jason, um, as you know, uh, and, and, and by the way, compliments to you for knowing so much about us. Um, I hope you have a life outside of us. So I, I, I try, I try. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, uh, uh, I, I watch some of the professional poker players, and uh, they lose a lot of hands, but the great ones end up winning, and they end up ahead. And, and, sure. and it's not luck, it's putting the odds in your favor. In other words, it's managing your money in terms of gambling. It's, mm -hmm. it's not betting on crazy odds. It's knowing the odds. And uh, um, I, I just like to encourage people that are thinking about any profession, um, Put yourself, no matter how you can, in a position to, um, or touch on this, to, to meet other people that are like-minded. Use, sure. use the inspiration you get from those people, and then let those people get you through the tough times. In, in the world of high finance, uh, uh, Ivy League education seems to be important, but I would argue that the relationships that you make while you're at those schools is more important than anything, and, uh, and then the alumni from those schools. So just being out. And uh, I think we beat this question to death. You got another one? <laughs> uh, yeah, hey, I've got plenty. But before I get to more of these questions, uh, we should absolutely take a, a quick break to thank uh, the first sponsor of this episode of Triangulation. That is Nature Box. Nature Box is for when, you know, your stomach's a little empty. You need some snacks in there. You don't want to just reach for, you know, the junk that's in the in the cabinet. You want to reach for something that's good for you. Nature Box ships tasty and guilt-free snacks right to your door. They have over 100 flavors to choose from, like mini Belgian waffles. Uh, just just a, a bunch to choose from. Right now, you can get a trial of their favorite snacks and just pay $2 for shipping. I mean, you know you're going to snack, obviously, and when you do, you want it to be worth it. You don't want to waste your snacking opportunity on something that's not going to taste very good, it's not going to be very good for you. You want it to be satisfying. You don't want to feel guilty. That's kind of what Nature Box is all about. Choose from over 100 healthy and crave-worthy options. They're delivered right to your door in a nice box -o. You know, when you get a shipment, <clears throat> you know what's waiting for you inside. It's delicious snacks that you can get right to. There's zero artificial flavors. Zero artificial colors, sweeteners, zero grams of trans fats, no high fructose corn syrup, and they taste awesome. They taste amazing, in fact. So good, so much better for you than the other options uh, that, you know, you're not going to want to reach for the junk. You're going to want to reach for this. Coffee kettle popcorn, there's dark chocolate berry trail mix. I've been eating this, actually, at my, at my desk. This is, this is some pretty good stuff right here. A little dark chocolate nubs in there uh, with berry trail mix. Honeycomb uh, sunflower kernels for the sunflower folks out there. I mean, the, the options, there are a ton. And you can kind of go through and dial into your own dietary preferences as well and really make the box uh, speak to you if you want it sweet, you want it savory, however you want to do it. Uh, Nature Box lets you do that. So next time you're hungry, just grab a strawberry lemonade fruit star or, or sweet and salty nut medley. I mean, they have tons, and I'm sure somebody gets paid big bucks to name these things and make them sound delicious because they do a really good job. Get smart about snacking. Right now, if you go to naturebox.com twit, you can get a trial of their favorite snacks delivered to your door. So what are you waiting for? Go to naturebox.com twit to start your trial today, and we thank Naturebox for their support of triangulation. So kind of continuing on with, with your history, um, 
leading up to the show in particular, uh, of which I'm a huge fan here, um, there was, so, okay, so you ended up at Larrabee, uh, and then you, you basically, at Larrabee Studios, Dave, it sounds like you, that's where things really solidified for your mixing career, right? That's, what, that's where you really kind of took things and took it full board. I know that that led to enterprise, but what I'm trying to get at is at some point, there was what you call the hamburger meeting uh, in the book. And the hamburger meeting seems to be a, kind of a pivotal point, kind of the, the light bulb uh, moment that led to what we have with Pensado's place. Uh, explain a little uh -huh. bit about kind of the first and the and the second hamburger meeting, if you don't mind. It, it explain explain about the first and second hamburger meeting. Oh, you know what? That's a better question for her because um, um, they were just some great hamburgers to me, <laughs> but they had some metaphorical significance. For her. It's, well, no, and yeah, and you know what? Actually, this is this perfectly ties in with what we we're talking about, right? Like luck uh, may only seem like luck. But when you're looking at it in the rearview mirror, uh, you realize how much of a pivotal moment it was. Whereas in the moment, it just seemed like a great hamburger. But it actually turned into kind of a, a big shift uh, in both of your careers. Would you say? Yeah, you know, um, Herb and I have been friends forever. It seems like, and, and certainly since I've been in LA from down there day one. Uh, and like any relationship. Um, there's there's months where we talk five times a day, and then there's there were months where we spoke uh, once or twice a month, and sometimes longer than that. And we were we had both for a minute gone our respective ways, trying to um, chase success, and uh, never never left each other's lives in terms of, of you know thinking about each other. And um, um, Providence brought us together, and, and we were um, we were spending some time discussing some um, some career opportunities for me, some career paths, and that sort of thing. And that that like a lot of like a lot of good things in in in, in life that happened over food. Typically, uh, it's called breaking bread, and mm -hmm. I think it has some a special significance. But um, uh, a couple of setbacks hit. I had a, a brain hemorrhage, and um, uh, so that, so there really wasn't a second hamburger meeting. There was a first one, and the fact that the second one was missed yeah. is how I was alerted that brain that David had an issue, and I actually couldn't find Dave for a minute. He never misses meetings, and um, and when I couldn't find him, and finally tracked him down and found out what had happened. Um, it was just, it was just really a shift from a friend being concerned for a friend. Um, it, you know, you know, Dave's recovery from his brain hemorrhage has been miraculous because there were, there were some moments in the hospital that were pretty serious and right on the brink. And from that, and I guess now in retrospect, we would call this luck, um, we that, and, and I must tell you, as much as a brain hemorrhage can be lucky, well, and, and as, right, as, right, as a, and as much as a hamburger can be lucky, it was lucky for the hospital. It made a crap load of money out of me. Um, so those moments forced sort of an action, <laughs> and in that action, we um, sort of had to create on the spot, and we were just doing it friend to friend. Um, because, you know, it, and, and here's where I think is the, the, not only was the shift physical and medical, but at a time when the industry was shifting as well, too. And, and a lot of people, the, 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 the shifts in the industry have been seismic over since we started this. And so now, in hindsight, which looks like kismet or luck, we just took the circumstances that were presented to us, turned it into something. Dave and I are really competitive. And we just decided if we were going to do something, we are going to do the damn thing to death. And um, here we are. Don't, 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 don't say that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, going to, we're going to do the damn thing to life. <laughs> and, and, and here we are. So it's a further example or the way we relay it to people that folks our age with our experience, with our seasoning, with our track records of success can still evolve and change when the circumstances present itself. If you're opening, if you're open to evolving and changing, right? Yeah, 
Jason, another quick thing. Um, um, I, I, if you ask anybody that has ever worked with me, I'm, I, I'm, I'm a big believer in surrounding yourself with the best of the best. And, and her product is the best of the best. And then once you surround yourself with those people, uh, you, you trust them. Let them do what they do. Yeah. You go do what you do best, let them do what they do best. And, and all my faith and trust that I put in her has just, has, has just um, got us to where we are. And, and uh, it's, um, it, it, I don't know how to describe it. Because I, I get emotional when I talk about it, but you got you can't do this thing alone. You can't do anything in life alone. You got to have good people around, people you trust, men trust them. Well, and, and Dave, if you, if you don't mind me saying so, I think that's part of what makes you makes you successful both in music uh, production, being being behind the scenes in music production, as, as well as with the show. It's certainly. Uh, one of the qualities that fans that have followed your show for the past five years really appreciate about the two of you, actually, just the kind of the kinship, uh, the dynamic that you both have, both at, you know on a professional level as well as um, as friends. And I mean, Dave, you, you also talk about this in the book. You uh, talk about kind of you know your assistants essentially, and I, I actually thought this was pretty fascinating because I I I couldn't tell you from experience, but I would imagine that not all. Uh, engineers in a you know in in the at the level that you are would be of the same um, ethos but you really that uh, kind of extends down to your assistants right your assistant isn't just a person who's uh, getting you a cup of coffee or, or maybe they are sometimes but that's not all they're doing right you actually uh, want them to bring their own uh, qualities to the table you want them to kind of be the best at, yeah. at what they're good at and not ultimately end up being a clone of you. And that's that's hugely respectful. Well, I'm applying the principle of principles I learned from being Herb's assistant for the last 25 years. Sure, sure. Um, <laughs> but, um, but you know what? Um, I'm blessed because um, no one person can keep up with all the information coming at you in the world. So my assistants become more than just assistants they uh they're they're they're, they're junior partners uh and, and i think that's just an extension of what i said earlier about trusting people mm -hmm. uh, i put a lot of faith and trust in my assistants um and, and they put more in me yeah, but it's also um well one i watched dave do that for years since i've known him for so long and he has like this incredible track record at, at uh, identifying young people who have long-term, big-term, big-time possibilities. So whether it's Manny, Mary Keen, Dylan Dresdow, Jason Joshua, uh, Sylvia Massey, um, his current assistant, Cole Nystrom, who you now gotten to know, um, they think Cole could be bigger than all the guys I just mentioned. I mentioned some pretty big guys. But to extend the metaphor... Um, and related back to the show, since I was placed as Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, <laughs> and the way that I run the show, um, and when I pitch the idea to Dave, um, we have from day one celebrated all the people who are critical to our success. We talk as much about Will Thompson, we talk as much about Sean Gorgons, we talk as much about Cole Nystrom, um, everybody, and, and consequently, we have got people who are fans of all those folks who are involved with them individually, too, because we think it's a village. Um, Dave and I are obviously the sort of front faces of it. We have our own separate folks who love us collectively and severally. And, but that multiplier effect, we think, is a much better thing because we think ultimately the show is our audience's show, and they should feel vested in it and they should have input into it, and they should have access to us or others. And in general, I think that makes for um, the kind of engagement that you see. They don't often call it, people are just seeing the romance on air. Um, what I call it uh, as EP is a combination of analog and digital. Um, and when YouTube had me in for meetings, um, the two big points that they pointed out was, very few things are on their platform for an hour mm -hmm. with, with the engagement level that we have. 
and there, you know, there's very few folks that are that are kind of our our age to do that. And I think that has a lot to do with bringing the old school stuff and the fact that we're okay with the relationship being seen and that we make it this right neighborhood, and we also teach and try to be entertaining mm-hmm. and have stuff like that. That that's all by design. Uh, because I think it reflects us the, the way who we truly are as people, and I think you have to do that in the area. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so here's here's kind of where things. So so basically, you, you discussed uh, building an in-house studio in Dave's in in Dave's house uh, during recovery yeah. uh, from the hemorrhage. Yeah. Uh, casual kind of conversations uh, at the house turned into, hey, the, the web exists educational opportunities this this could be a, you know a chance to to try something new and you ended up in a studio um, talking with some folks there who 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 locked into the idea this is uh, I believe this is the this weekend uh, studio is that right yeah at that point um, yeah it was and, and again this is one of those things that in hindsight seems like luck um, the specifics were, I, the hamburger meeting was Dave and I were talking about his career. He's being managed by Rock Nation at the time. Good relationship there. And and Dave, I would periodically pick Dave's head over time. And he would periodically pick mine. There's a lot of that that I seem to find myself in, which is fine. And um, when the once we got past the medical incident, we got down to practicalities. How do we make a living? So right. Dave would start mixing out of the home studio instead of. Um, how do we balance out what kind of investment they want to put into whatever we want to do? And I happened to be at his house. I think we were watching some NBA. Um, my stepdaughter's name is Tyler. I had to call Tyler. It reminded him to call a guitar player he knows named Tyler, who works at this network called This Weekend. We called him. He said, oh, come down, see what we're doing. We went, and we were just standing there, and it struck me that it was this little room, and they had you know, 10 or 12 shows, but they were also trying to put together a small SEO firm, kind of like a baby Google. And so while we were watching these shows, I just started talking to tech people about this idea of what if we took the Pensado name and did something on the web. It wasn't quite clear what it was going to be. Next day I got an an email from the CEO, and he said, we'd like to do this as a show. There's one of those luck moments. Uh, I said, Dave, sushi, 8 o'clock. So we went to Sushi, and I said, look, man, this will never last, but it's an opportunity for you not to have to put up money to start to capture content. Let me let me cut a deal. Uh, we won't call it what they like to call their shows. And we sort of geared for a short-term way to grab content where they would capture it, and we would be able to do something with it ourselves and move forward. And as they say, best laid plans of mice and men. Uh, all of a sudden, we started getting reaction, and and our earliest reaction were from schools. That's but awesome. that's the those. Well, no, let me back that up. It was from schools, and it was from the pros that were coming on. It was almost like we found something that they needed really badly. And you know, when people start to confirm for you early, Tony Maserati and Bruce Swigian and Manny and all those guys, going, this is fantastic. This is fantastic. We could feel this building genesis, and um, and then and then the other part is Will Thompson, who at the time was running audio and then turned into Mister Everything for us. Kept saying, "Guys, there's something here. Let me tell you how it should go." And and we just kept listening and kept doing, and here we are. Also, too, um, I think it should be. It sh- I should point out that if you want to formulate an idea, hamburgers are good, but if you want to take it to the next level, you have to. With a higher priced food like sushi, which tends to produce better ideas because fish, as we all know, is brain food. I think that's a big I'm takeaway I'm here: is that hamburgers versus sushi. You probably want to side with sushi when when you're taking things uh, a little bit ser- more seriously. Uh, fascinating stuff. So, okay, so um, when we come back, we're going to kind of talk about the show itself, uh, kind of what it's what it's created, because it isn't just a show now. It's it's become a lot more than that. You've got an awards show. Obviously, uh, you have the book, The Pensados Papers, which I highly recommend uh, everyone read to kind of get a sense of what, what motivates the show and also just in audio production in general. There's a lot of really good tips in here. Um, but we're going to talk all about that when we come back. Right now, let's thank the 
second sponsor of today's episode, and that is Wealthfront. You know that you should be investing your money for the long term. That's what's smart for you, uh, for your family's financial health. You've probably wondered how you should do it. Trying to do it yourself, especially the right way, is complex. It's time consuming. Uh, luckily, there's Wealthfront. That's what Wealthfront is all about. Traditional advisors charge huge fees, sometimes between 1% to 3% of what you've got under management, plus hidden fees for transactions and changes. Wealthfront makes it easy for anyone to access world-class, long-term investment management. It's an online automated service that invests your money for you. You sign up for an account at Wealthfront.com in just minutes, and it goes right to work monitoring your portfolios around the clock, taking action as soon as opportunity arises. Whether you're investing for retirement or maybe for a, a different long-term goal, Wealthfront actually automatically rebalances your portfolio and reinvests your dividends, all commission-free. Wealthfront's software optimizes your investments for the best risk-adjusted return, net of taxes and fees. And Wealthfront is transparent. It's accessible. You can view all your accounts in one place whether they're personal, joint, or retirement. You can also see every trade that Wealthfront makes on your behalf in your dashboard, on your desktop, or even with their mobile app. Sophisticated investment strategies like tax loss harvesting and direct indexing, which optimize your after-tax returns while simultaneously lowering your tax bill, which is good. Uh, with Wealthfront, you pay one quarter of 1% a year. That's 25 basis points. There's zero commissions, no hidden fees, that's less than $5 a month to invest a $30,000 account. And there are no additional charges for any of Wealthfront's services. Wealthfront manages over $2.4 billion in client assets, and it's grown over 20 times in the past two years. Join Wealthfront and start investing your money the right way today. Now, for compliance purposes, I have to tell you that Wealthfront Inc. is an SEC-registered investment advisor. Brokerage services are offered through Wealthfront Brokerage Corporation, member uh, FINRA and I SIPC. This is not a solicitation to buy or sell securities. Investing in securities involves risk, and there's the possibility of losing money. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. Please visit Wealthfront.com to read their full disclosure. So if you want to get in on the action, visit Wealthfront.com slash triangulation to sign up and get your free personalized investment portfolio. You'll see the customized allocation they recommend for your profile. And just for Twit listeners, if you sign up to invest, Wealthfront will manage your first $15,000 entirely free of charge for life. Claim your offer today at Wealthfront.com slash triangulation. And we thank Wealthfront for their support of this show. All right. I'm here uh, talking with Dave Pensato uh, and Herb Trowick of uh, Pensato's Place and just a whole bunch of other stuff. We're kind of starting to get into the meat of, of the show itself and kind of what it's created. And I think for me, the benefit of the show has been largely in, uh, not only is it entertaining, but the educational aspect of the show. Um, you turned it into a real show. Herb, you became uh, the co-host, though I'm sure you didn't expect to become a co-host at some point. It kind of sounded like it kind of fell in your lap and and, and here you are, although I couldn't imagine uh, you guys doing the show without each other. It, 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 you kind of go hand in hand with each other, so I'm happy it worked out that way. <laughs> Has that been kind of a, an interesting learning experience you for you? Uh, it is. Um, when we do our live events, I do kind of the scales of justice thing. Yeah. If you had two scales, um, in one scale for me, in one hand would be, you know, my record career where I've managed you know, a couple of artists went who sold like 25 million records. I've been offered the presidency of a division of a record company. I've run several labels. I've been a consultant to Interscope and Def Jam and, and Mercury and Motown, a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, I've taken a show to Broadway as one of the main producers. <laughs> I've had a pretty, I signed, I got Robin Thicke signed, I got Tyree signed as a kid. I, I've had a number of opportunities to consult on the executive and on the talent level. So if you take all that, put it in one hand, and you take Pensado on the other hand, and then that way it, Pensado is about 2,000 feet in the air compared to the other stuff. It's not even close. So it has not only been a learning thing, it's been exhilarating. Um, I find folks in this space brilliant and interesting and compelling. 
Um, I get to um, run unfettered, which is really important. It speaks to Dave and I's partnership. I'm not somebody who can run contained. I'm not somebody who tends to follow, um, which means people have to kind of buy into this kind of Machiavellian black dude who has this vision. Um, and I think maybe most important I get to with my boy. Mm-hmm. And um, that relationship is kind of what people see. And I'm pretty um, naked about um, that emotion and what it means. Yeah. Because this always place means something different for me than everybody else. When I came up with the idea, I just want my boy to be around. And so every day, my boy is around in some pretty spectacular ways all over the globe. And I get to kind of do it with him. And, 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 and Dave is very generous, and as, a, as am I. So, yeah, it has been phenomenal. And it has taken us places and allowed us to create certain things that are just Amazing. I can't imagine. Thank God Dave was not the broadcaster he was in the beginning and we needed a co-host. Thank God we didn't find one, so I didn't go with it. And now that he is just succinct and great and grown and we both have grown, um, we really feel like we have an opportunity to give back over and over and over again in ways that satisfy both the people that support us, the people that rely on us, and the way we rely on each other. It is friggin' amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. And, I mean, it's it's led to some impressive things. Obviously, you were talking early on about interest in schools. There are a number of uh, audio engineering schools that, uh, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, the, the show is kind of required listening for the class, if not... Uh, if not uh, re- uh, recommended listening, and it certainly makes sense. It's a very educational kind of a format. Uh, it's led to scholarships. You guys are awarding over $150,000 in scholarships to audio engineering students. Like the last, last yeah, last year we gave a, we not not quite the same number this year. Last year we gave $150,000 in scholarships away based on some of our sponsors and what they wanted to do. We have well over 100 schools are using this curriculum around the globe as a teaching tool, not sometimes official curriculum, most often as a teaching tool. Um, and those include audio programs, and sometimes folks that aren't specifically audio, sometimes digital media, we have our MCN channels that have signed us up because of the way we do production. Uh, we have our own theater. We have about seven offshore verticals. We have our own gear expo business. We have a global distribution deal for curriculums, which we'll be announcing soon. Uh, I'm in discussions about creating a live division. We'll roll up. Uh, we have a couple of franchises. Uh, Pensado Capital Jam, we just established in D.C. this year. Gear Expo, we're going its third year in Na- uh, once in L.A., twice in Nashville. Um, that will be in September. We have something called uh, Mix Fest, which we're likely to do on the East Coast. We get a lot of international requests to do something. I know that we just got a proposal from India to come there. And then we have this granddaddy thing called the Pensado Awards, which we did last year for the first time. And I will tell you that when Paul McCartney says the name of your show <laughs> and sends you videotape, um, Dave and I were stunned, but at the first Pensado Awards, which frankly, almost we almost bankrupted ourselves doing it because I don't know how to do things that are not first class. Yeah. I just refused to do that. When Paul McCartney sends tape and Neil Young shows up and Saturday Night Live comes in and a couple of guys from Foo Fighters and Alice the Kid and all these different folks came and paid homage to each other, not to Dave and I. Dave and I came out for five minutes and that was it. This is a chance for me to celebrate. The fact that we get to do all that is just, it's just, it's just stunning. And, and we are nowhere near done. I'm telling you, we got stuff. So, by the way, for your audience, who we love, August 30th, if you're not doing anything, come to L.A., come to Culver City. We're taking over the Sony movie lot, and uh, we're going to throw an award show that is worthy of this community because there are no arts without the audio arts. Imagine everything else that was just silent, not happening. So it's going to be a big turnout. We're going to do it outdoors over the stars. It's going to be off the hook. 
I mean, what what you've done with an awards show, like I can only imagine how much preparation, how costly something like this has to be. You did it the very first one last year, the Pensado Awards. And I mean, you know, we were hearing about it for months leading up to the show. And I mean, that, that just built excitement because you were like, okay, how is this gonna happen? Is it gonna go off with a bang or, a, or you know, a fizz? And I mean, it, it was exactly what, it, what everyone expected. It was a super uh, huge success. And not only were you guys paying attention to professionals in the industry who are behind the curtain, behind the scenes, you, don't, you know, most people don't know that these people are there doing what they do, yet they have such an influence over what people enjoy and what they hear. Uh, so they're behind the scenes. They don't normally get this, this sort of exposure. But you also shine the light on people who are up and coming, which I thought was just uh, so fascinating. And, and apparently that was one of the most successful highlighted uh, parts of the award show. Is that right? Yeah. Uh we had an award called the Air Award, the best assistant intern or runner. And um, most of the engineers uh, are friends of mine. And it was so funny. They were actually getting a little pissy trying to lobby for their particular individual guys. And then um, Herb, um, Herb came up with that. And then he also came up with the idea of trying to find the best, uh, not the best, but the most unique home recording studio. And we had a... a, a some kids that um, converted a mail truck to a, a mobile recording studio, and they got some, uh, I can't say the name, what was that crystal company that they, they covered it with this, this, these very expensive crystals that uh, Michael Jackson had rejected, and, and uh, it, 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 it really is a great celebration of us hanging out, us being people in audio, hanging out with other people in audio, patting each other on the back, having a great time. Um, and, and this year's going to be even more spectacular. It's hard to describe it, Jason. It's, uh, for me, it was a really special moment in my life, seeing so many people in audio come together in one room and just had a ball. And, and, and our point is that it's supposed to be democratized. Yep. The guy in Israel, or in, I got an email from Ukraine yesterday, and this guy just so over the top when that night when you come to our event i want you to feel like cla is your boy or tom Mas or tony maserati somebody you can have a communication with and we require that of the professionals it's not that much to ask of somebody to say spend five minutes with somebody who adores you who will travel to meet you and what we have found is that all the pros um they they love that they they didn't know and I won't say it's just our show, but maybe we're the current example of it. They didn't know how much they were revered. Mm -hmm. I didn't come from the audio space. And when I came in and looked at it, I said, here are people that celebrate knobs and taters <laughs> and shit. There's so much more here. And these are brilliant people with complex jobs, with deep, deep understanding of things, and fans who love them. There's a whole lot more people who don't think they can become Jason Mraz but they think they might be able to mix mm -hmm. and, and, or do something in audio. And so when we're going to bring people together, I hate the notion that I will not involve myself in the notion of I'm going to segregate all the enthusiasts and they mean nothing, and we're just going to fawn all over the VIPs, and then the enthusiasts are there to just support the VIPs. That's bullish, and that will never be a consolidated ethos on any event I'm involved with, any event I create, and I create them. So therefore, if you come to our things, you're an architect of the show. You're a participant of the award show. We're going to find some awards that are applicable to you. You're going to get to vote on who it is, and then you can hang and party with your guys. And that's that whole point of it being Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. Yeah. Now, our place is a community and a communal place to come. If you have to be funky, there's other places to go. We prefer that, that you don't do that here, but we understand and we're open and we just think that that is a better way to approach what we do and so far has been successful kind of beyond our dreams. What he said. <laughs> <laughs> Retweet. Uh, that's awesome, you guys. So um, anyone who's interested uh, in finding out more about the awards, it's pensadoawards.com. 
And you've even got a countdown going, 55 days left until the award show, second, annu uh, second annual. And I imagine you're just going to keep this going for as long as it can. Well, the, the, the big problem that we have created is that it works for our sponsors, it works for the audience, and now we have these tent poles for the franchises that we have to do every year, and they're increasing. So, you know, yeah. more and more our lives are going to be, you know, taping our weekly show, which we've done 220 some odd episodes a day, and I haven't missed any, and then being on the road doing live events. And, and our live events are very interactive. You know, we get people hired. We give away equipment. I think our last one, we gave away $25,000 worth of gear. We gave away five recording studios. We, we look, we're not Mother Teresa. We do this because of incredible sponsors, mm -hmm. Blackbird Academy and Audio Technica and Aftermaster and Isotope and folks who step up and I make outlandish requests of them and they always come through, but they see that the response and the, and the fact that they're caring kind of folks comes back to them in ROI. Um, and so, um, yeah, we're going to keep doing this and, and me and one of us are tired and we're excited and we're going to take it internationally. We've been doing it domestically for five years and there's a lot of pressure to, to go overseas. And we're excited about it, man. And, and you need to come with us. And by the way, uh, triangulation fans, um, we're going to set something up and then you guys want to come to the award show. We're going to make, you know, 10 tickets are so available to you just because we think you're a very cool audience. Um, if you hit Consult Awards, they actually hit info at consultantsplace.tv. Um, say Herb said to send you an email, and we'll get you to my uh, supervising producer and see if we can't get five or ten of you to come to the show for free. We'd love to have you. Oh, man, that's, that's an awesome opportunity for uh, fans of this show and fans of the network, fans of audio production in general. Uh, it sounds like a party. I believe you uh, continually say, uh, boots bumping, mascara melting. Would that be right for the post Booty. show? Booties bumping. Booty, booties boots. bumping, mascara melting. We like big moments. <laughs> you know, if, if everything goes according to plan, there'll be a. You know, I'm in conversations with the Beastie Boys DJ. Um, we're gonna have a ridiculous jam band. Um, okay. There's gonna be some spectacular moments at that show. There's four locations. Everybody will have their own VIP reception. We'll have the big show under the park. And then afterwards, you literally will be able to go into the lair, which is the segment of our show, for a party that will melt your hair down. So yeah. it's a, it's, it's a full-on thing. Bring your swagger and bring your celebratory attitude and have a good time. Oh, that's awesome. That's great. All right, so we have to thank one final sponsor. And then before we go really quick, I have to fit in a little bit of a batter's box and a corner I office box, real quick yeah, here because we're run, quickly running out of time. But before we do that, let's thank the, spo the final sponsor of today's episode of Triangulation, and that is Braintree. Developers, you want to listen up. This is code for easy online payments. Uh, if you're a mobile app developer, you want to check out Braintree. Braintree is the payment solution used by companies like Uber, Airbnb, Hotel Tonight, Living Social, Munchery. Braintree has made the payment experience in these apps seamless, magical. You hardly even know it's there. Now you can add a similar experience to your own app. With excellent customer service and simple integration, Braintree gets you ready to receive payments quickly. And Braintree's continuous support plus fast payouts means you'll be prepared as your company grows from your first dollar to your billionth. Braintree is helping solve the problem of mobile cart abandonment by offering a best-in-class mobile checkout experience that you can check out for yourself. Braintree has made the payment experience in these apps seamless and magical, not to mention simple. It's, it's like a few lines of code, and developers have got to love that uh, maximum impact there. So Braintree gives you a full-stack payment option, support for all payment types your customers might want, you can start accepting PayPal, Apple Pay, Bitcoin, Venmo, cards, and more, all with a single integration across all platforms. With superior fraud protection, customer support, and fast payouts, all included. So to learn more and for your first $50,000 in transactions fee-free, go to BraintreePayments.com slash triangulation. We thank Braintree for their support. All right, so we have to wrap things up here very shortly, but beforehand, I wanted to kind of do a little bit of an homage to the show. Uh, you guys with Pensado's Place, 
you kind of break it up into three three sections essentially. There's well, you no, know, actually more than that because you've got into the layer, which is like a, a behind the scenes, you know, how to section. I didn't have that in today's show for obvious reasons, but you've got the interview, then you've got the batter's box, and then you've got the corner office. Batter's box is usually kind of like a word association sort of thing. So you would ask uh, Dave or Herb, you would ask, you know, an engineer, you know, kick drum, and they would have to name off the thing that comes to their mind. Is it a process? Is it a technique? It is something that they find uh, unnecessary, whatever it happens to be. Um, so let's do that. I prepared a couple of batter box questions, batter's box questions for you. And I'm curious to see how you'll answer. These uh, are maybe less about um, audio production in general and more broad, broader in scope, maybe more uh, associated with the show oh, in general. All right, so batter's box, don't have a fancy sound effect to play for it, that's okay. Here we go, all right. YouTube, the good and the bad. I didn't hear that. YouTube, good. Oh, YouTube, amazing. Amazing. Uh, good is amazing. Um, as it evolves, you have to manage around some of the things that can be limitations, like take down notes and stuff, but better than not. Yeah. One more answers. Excellent. Yeah. Oof, that was, that was tight. Uh, streaming versus ownership of music. Streaming. Mm -hmm. Uh, jury out. Jury is out. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm loving the streaming these days. Audio software piracy. Um, uh, copy protection by most manufacturers sucks. Do what you got to do. All right. Fair enough. Online community. Stunning. Amazing, wonderful, innovative, energizing. Inspirational. Yeah, that sums it up completely. Uh, curious on this one. Pono or high fidelity portable audio? For the 1% elitists. <laughs> Uh, I ask this one not knowing whether you're going to have an answer for this, but I think it ties into some of the uh, studios that you've worked at. Uh, the TriCaster for video production. Uh, speaking for our director, wonderful. All right. Necessary for us. Necessary what, in what you're doing now because you're at a new studio, right? Is that running on a TriCaster? No, it's running on a... Um it was Sony Switcher now, okay. although we, use, we, 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 we have different things available to us, but TriCaster is our director's uh, choice of Switcher. For Preference. Sure. Yeah, more and more. That's what we use here. Um, the most important quality for a successful assistant? Successful what? Assistant? Attitude. Good attitude. All right. Yeah, I think, that, I think that's correct. All right, and this goes for both of you, because um, it could be different. The interview from Pensado's place that you personally learned the most from, or the, found the most inspiring, or one of them, anyways. Um, probably the one uh, her interviewed me. Yeah. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, that was a smart-ass answer. Man, I learned from every one of them. Uh, I might have to get back to you on that. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'd like to, I'm, I'm going against my own rules of lengthening the answer from more than one word, but I learned, I learned different things from different interviews. Um, JJP, Salon Remy, Andrew Sheps. Um, uh, God, there's so many. Yeah different types. There, there are certain interviews, and I'm breaking the rule too, that it's almost like a sports team, and it's, you're just in the moment, and you look up and the hour's gone, and those are always the ones that just, yeah. there's a certain kind of brilliance from the, for, and it, it goes week by week. You know what, Jason, um, to lengthen it even more, uh, and this has nothing to do with Herb and I, but just it's our guests, I'm not really sure we've ever done a bad interview. Uh, our guests we choose them because they are representative of a certain concept, idea, or part of the industry, and and we've never had to throw one in the trash can. They, you've seen every one we've done. That they all have a, they all have something that you learn from. Absolutely. Or that I learned. Absolutely. Yeah. 
it's part of who you invite on the program uh, initially, and they, they kind of run with it. So I would completely agree as a listener. All right, you guys won. Uh, no no big surprise. I I didn't win in this round. It's, let, it's let, me you, let me ask you a question, Jason, in terms of my answers and Herb's, whose were the best? Oh, man, you're going to make me choose, huh? <laughs> um, you know, you, you, know I th- you, you, can, you can start. You can start. You can you can say I'll get back to you on that one. Oh, that's a good. That's actually okay. Now I understand that answer, um, which I think I'm going to have to do. Hey, you both punted on the last question, so I'm going to go ahead and punt on this one too. Okay, you're, that's good. You're you're both beautiful. How about that? Favorite episode. <laughs> you know, man, that is that is a really hard question to answer. I actually pulled up all of the episodes, uh, the list, and scrolled through them multiple times trying to like pick out one solid uh, show uh, to name because I figured you'd probably come back with that. And I can't do it o- only because every single episode is an education. And that's, I think, what I appreciate about it more than anything else. Everybody brings something different. There might be somebody on that that isn't necessarily speaking to the creative path that I appreciate most most in my own personal world, but it's all educational and you learn from all of it so much and it's and it's always that way with the show. That's why it's such a great show because I know when I listen to it, it's going to be solid uh, content that I can learn from and I'm exposed to a lot of new people as a result. So I can't even answer that question. Well, that, that is likely, from my chair, probably Will's as well, uh, the best compliment that we could have for the show. And, by the way, that was the correct answer. Um, oh, okay. One, one, one of the things that we test is when we have people over to the show who are not in audio, and they come up to us afterwards and go, God, I'm not in audio, but I just found that so interesting. Right. Then we, then we you know, that's kind of our benchmark. So um, we appreciate that you said that, man. You know, you know we're huge fans. And by the way, you and Leo and team need to come down to a taping and let us have you on our show. Yeah. Oh, well, I've, <laughs> I will talk with Leo about that. You better believe I'm probably going to fire him an email about that uh, about two seconds oh, yeah, after this show ends. Uh, I will get in touch yeah. with you. That is awesome. That's a great, a great yeah, opportunity. Great stuff, but there won't be any video for you. <laughs> Uh, I would I would uh, also love to be in the same room with you uh, as opposed to on the phone. So let's make something work. Let's make something happen. Um, you okay. guys, this is this has just been a, a tremendous honor. If you haven't already um, t- <laughs> guessed by now, I'm just a huge fan, and I love what you guys are doing, and you just got to keep it up, and I know you're going to. Um, this is kind of your chance to let people know where to find what you got going on and, and uh, so that they can seek you out and do what they need to do to, to listen to you guys. What's what's the scoop? What do you want people to know uh, wrapping things up here? You know, join us at TentilesPlace.tv. Um, we're there every week. Um, we try to give you a broad range of things. As Jason said earlier, uh, one week may be something that's right down your alley. Or as Dave puts it, some days we give you meat, some days you have vegetables. Uh, but they all end up being good for you. Um <laughs> We'd love to see you when we're out and about on the road and, and hear from you. Um, most people come to our events, and they're a little bit church-like and a little bit revival-like, and we have a lot of fun, and we we try to share and educate. Um, we don't want to beat you over the head with anything. You are really the reason we do it. Your input's important. Um, and we just thank you so much for your support. Our team, uh, which does not get enough credit, is just awesome. And um, and we are completely humbled, and we're just going to keep at it, and we'll just keep trying to get better and better. And, we, and again, Dave and I, thank you so much. Absolutely. Right on. All right, pensadosplace.tv for the show. You can go to pensadoawards.com to find out all about the, uh, the awesome awards show that's coming up in 55 days. Check it out. Uh, even if you're not an, into audio and music production, check out the show, because really what it boils down to is it's about – creativity and realizing creativity and embracing it and I think as creative individuals uh, maybe you're creative maybe you're not but it's a great insight into what what happens when you follow your passion and uh, you know it, it turns out there's a lot of people who follow their passion follow their hearts on this show and you listen to the result of that every single day when you're listening to uh, music on the radio and through Spotify or wherever you happen to find your music this is 
how it gets created, and that, that's what I love about it so much. Uh, so big thanks to Dave Pensato and Herb Trowick for joining me today on Triangulation. Big thanks to Leo for letting me fill in and giving me this opportunity to kind of sit in the seat here and ask some questions to a few of my heroes. Um, Triangulation records every Monday at 11 a.m. Pacific. You can uh, find it at uh, twit.tv slash live for the live taping. You can also go to the show page at twit.tv slash triangulation uh, to find this episode as well as all of our back uh, catalog of episodes, all of the wonderful interviews that Leo's recorded over the, the years that the show's been here. It's been, been a long time. I mean, this is episode, what, 207? So, uh, so we're looking good on that. But uh, again, thank you so much for joining me uh, today on Triangulation, and we will see you next week.